Saint Raphael's letter to the community of Cordova. The handmaids in Cordova kept Raphael's letters like a treasure. Whenever they had the good fortune to receive a few lines from her, they were always anxious to have her advice. To satisfy their desires, Rafaela wrote this letter to the whole community. Her only intention was to share her thoughts with them, which she does with charming spontaneity, giving us, as she does so, a complete code of sanctity, holiness, for a handmaid of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Mother Maria San Ignacio tells us how the letter was received by the handmaids there. What a joy your letter has given us. It has done us so much good. The sisters have been overflowing with happiness ever since we received it. They are all making copies of it. In recreation on Sundays, they read it, and it moves them so much that we see a few tears. I am thinking of sending a copy to Jerez. Her statement is confirmed by the very many copies of this precious letter which have come down to us. Written in Madrid before the 20th of January, 1884. My dear sisters in the Sacred Heart, I cannot bear this silence any longer. Do not blame it on forgetfulness or still less on a cooling of my affection for you, because that is not so. But you must blame the great amount of work which I have all around me, as you will well understand when you get over those little temptations which do not leave you in peace. Am I not right? Probably never an hour goes by in which I do not remember you, and there are not many in which I do not stop to think of each one of you in that house. And I say to our Lord, Dear Lord, I place the veil of consecration upon each one of them, and I have done, done all I could to make them know you and to serve you with the greatest fervour and joy of heart. Will you do me the favour of inscribing them all in your divine heart? And afterwards, let them enjoy you for all eternity? It seems to me that he answers yes, as is proved by the trials he sends. They are always the surest way. Af Holy Father Antonio used to say that where the body was, there would the eagles gather, because God could not dwell in a place or attract good people to it unless he found peace and repose there. Will he find it in our congregation? Yes. There is no doubt about that. We see it by the trials. What a joy it should be for us, my dear sisters, to please our good God and to have him wanting to dwell with us and that we should be the means of making others pleasing to him. But although we are small, very small, as indeed we are, and if any member of our congregation thinks she is somebody, she deserves to be treated as if she were mad. Yet, our aspirations, supported by God, 
must be very great. Not in grand showy things, for the very reason that we are so small, but in the small virtues, in little daily things, imitating Jesus, Mary and Joseph. If we are very obedient to all that is asked of us by our holy rules and customs, we shall be obedient to our superiors and to God in them. I ask our Lord every day to give each one of us such childlike and blind obedience that we obey even the slightest indication of our superior's will without looking to see if what we are doing is good or bad or if something else would be better. The person who is truly obedient, especially in spiritual matters, is a truly happy person. Why? Because she is humble. The principal characteristics of a humble person are obedience and gratitude. The latter is a very necessary virtue, which our Lord is pleased to see in us in a very high degree. The one who is truly humble and who knows herself well will obey anyone and consider anyone to be greater than herself. Take note of this. Talented people trust others more than themselves. But it is a sign of lack of talent to make oneself out to be wise and learned and to be mistrustful and suspicious. May God, in his infinite mercy, free our institute from such ridiculous minds, which do so much harm, and what is more, offend the divine heart of our dear Jesus. My dear sisters, let us be docile and compliant if we desire to receive still more gifts from our Lord. Let us also be very grateful to our good God because he has called us out of the world. And now, my dears, while we are still at the foundations, let us go down deeply so that the strong winds which come will not be able to demolish our building. Let us all work together as one so that there is no crack anywhere into which the devil might be able to put his claw and cause disunion. All united as one in everything, like the fingers on a hand. Thus, we shall succeed in anything we do because we have the Lord for our own. Let us give our whole heart to God completely, not keeping anything back, for our heart is very little and he is great. And don't give it to him all wrinkled and crumpled up, but make it large and strong, full of love for him and no self-love at all. Let us increase our desire for the salvation of souls. Don't be satisfied with eight or ten, but for millions and millions. The heart of a reparatress should not be limited to any determined number, but should extend to the whole world. For all are children of the heart of our good Jesus, and every one has cost him all of his blood, which is too precious for a single drop to be lost. There, I have given you a real sermon. I s have still plenty left to say, but I think I have said enough to remind you of all that you heard so frequently during the novitiate, haven't I? 
Pray hard for me, my dears, for my burden is increasing. Be very good, as you all want to be, and as you are, thank God. Then I can be at ease about you, my grown-up daughters, my honour, my support, and one day, my glory. And I can give myself to these little ones here, and to those whom God will go on sending us. You must be good daughters, and not be upset if your mother does not write. I have told you that I love you with all my heart, each one of you without exception. And I am glad that you write to me with complete confidence. Do you understand? So no more grumbling. Let us begin a new life in the Sacred Heart, where he keeps you all, so that you may imitate him in everything. Yours in Jesus, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Jesus.